بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والتابعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brother in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatin min sani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma alhimni rujdi wa qini shara nafsi. اللهم اجعلني مباركا اينما كنت واجعل لي نورا في السماوات والارض اللهم انت المسمع وانت المفهم وانت العليم وانت السميع وانت البصير فاهدنا يا رب العالمين واجعلنا هداة المهديين غير ضالين ولا مضلين ولا فاتنين ولا مفتونين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين I have some request from different brother and sister. Ask me to talk about the topic of family and family structure in Islam. And before we talk about the family, we ask, why we choose the family issue? What's the importance of the family? Family in Islam is the nucleus of the Ummah, the nucleus of the nation. If the family is good, is healthy, is strong, the community is healthy and strong, the nation is healthy and strong. And we have civilization. But if the family is weak, is corrupt, the community is weak and corrupt, the whole nation is weak and corrupt, and you have no civilization. Today, the majority of people think about civilization with the wrong understanding. People think civilization meaning material things. No. Civilization is understood as the level of morals value, the level of the behavior of person, individual and collective. The status of the level of rights, the level of human dignity, the level of value. Again, not in a material value. What we see today? We see today no value. Family has been broken. And I'm talking about in general, all over. But this is unique because a Muslim should have a strong family. But why we lost the strong family? I really sometimes do not like to talk about this topic because I believe today as a Muslim, we're not ready to accept the rule of Allah. We're not ready to surrender and submit to the will of Allah. We only submit part-time. We only submit in a topic we like. What this mean? Meaning either we are in a state of weakness or in a state of hypocrite or hypocrisy. And I believe is both. Any nation 
any group of people, they will be strong and develop beautiful life according to the status of the family. And this is why Islam recognized by the will of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is number one, you develop the family. And the family in the basic containing of a man and a woman, a husband and wife. And in Islam, each one has rules and regulation. Each one has duties and obligations. But again, when we lost the complete obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to Allah, we lost our family. Today, when we go to different masajid, we will find a lot of disease, a lot of corruption. Why? Because we carry our own disease from our home to the masajid. In the early days, the Muslim was very strong. They have very strong family. And when they go to the masajid, all this quality of the family show up and the masajid become the means and light to spread Islam and spread guidance and spread morals and spread manner. But today, may Allah save us of ourself, our own shaitan. We lost that. By this way, today, we have a family full of disease. We take the family to the masjid, we spread our disease. And now we make the new Muslim confused. They do not know what is going on. The lack of knowledge, the state of ignorance, and you add to the top of that the weak iman and the state of hypocrisy. Where we start? We start with knowledge, number one. But knowledge is not a magic word. Because the devil by himself, the Satan, Iblis, he's the most knowledgeable. He's a scholar of all the scholar. He knows all the message. He knows the reality of Allah the Creator. But what happened? He disobeyed Allah. What's the difference between Iblis, Satan, and Adam alayhi salam? Both of them commit sins. But Iblis, the Satan, the devil, he blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He blamed the Creator. And he said, وَبِمَا فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Because you causing me to be stray, Allah. You the one you trick me. By this way, he returned his mistake and his sins and disobedience to Allah. <clears throat> what this meaning? This is status of arrogant, kib. Because one of the signs of the mutakabbir, the insane, the person who have kept, he do not want to say I'm wrong. He do not want to be humble. And he will not willing to accept the knowledge. Now you understand why I'm going to this topic? In other hand, Adam alayhi salam, he commits sins. What he did, he went cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, O oh Allah, forgive us, we oppress ourselves. And if you will not forgive us, we will be among those who are losers. You see the difference? 
and he keep crying and prostrating to Allah to ask him for forgiveness and repent. Today, similar. Because all the time the Sunnah of Allah is the same. The way of Allah is the same. Everybody, because Allah is just. He give us all, all of us, he show us the knowledge. But each one will see the knowledge according to the status of his heart. The more your heart in a state of humble, you will realize you have vision, you have basira, you can hear, you can see, you can comprehend. But if you're not humble, and you're not honest, and you're not truthful, you cannot see, you cannot comprehend, you cannot vision. Where is coming from? From Allah. Allah veil whom he want, and Allah open the veil for whom he want, according to the status of the heart. Who knows that? Allah. Do not blame nobody except yourself. By this way, yes, we are in a lack of knowledge, but please be careful and be aware. Knowledge to be benefit to anyone, it has to go to four levels before you reach the light of knowledge. Because knowledge, it comes with two things, either light or fire, darkness or understanding and light. If you fulfill the right of knowledge, you will get the light and vision from Allah and the right understanding. If you will not respect knowledge and fulfill the right of knowledge, Allah will snatch the light of knowledge from you, the right understanding, and give you darkness and put you stray even when you have knowledge. What is the rights of knowledge? If a person won't learn, you find him he has a will to learn. If the person doesn't have a will to learn, nothing you can do for him. Nothing. All of a sudden, either he go to sleep, or he will not like to sit. Or even when he sit, he will not even benefit. Because he doesn't have the will. He doesn't have the honesty. He do not want to learn. What is the right of knowledge? Number one, you have to seek knowledge. You have to struggle to learn knowledge. Once you get the knowledge, it's number one. Now you go to the second stage. You have to implement what you know. You have to try to implement what you know. To implement what you know, only you need another level. Istiqama, steadfast. And otherwise, it will not benefit you. It will benefit you for a short time, and that's it. Number three, Knowledge like money. Once you have it, you have to give it to whom he want it. Purely to Allah. This third level meaning is you have to go and help those who need the knowledge and give it to them. Now once you help people and give them some of the knowledge Allah give you, is similar to money. When we have money, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not give us money to keep our money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us money to help the poor and give them money. Similar knowledge. Once Allah give me knowledge, I cannot take it and that's it. And I said, I'm benefit. Allah give me knowledge and that's it. No. A Muslim cannot be selfish. A Muslim cannot be selfish. You cannot be stingy. 
is a quality of hypocrisy of hypocrite people. But yes, we once I have the knowledge exactly like money, I have to spend it. How you spend knowledge? Buy, teach it, and give it to whom who want it. And number four level of the right of knowledge is you have to be patient. You have to be patient of giving the knowledge. And make sure you give the knowledge according to your people who seek the knowledge. Now, if you do this for a level, you have been accomplished in the front of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the right of knowledge. Today, we have a big problem. We seek knowledge, but we act like Iblis. We act exactly like Iblis, the Satan, the devil. We get the knowledge, and we pick and choose, and we become arrogant, have kept over the command and teaching of Allah. And this why, all of a sudden you find today, we have a lot of knowledge, but it's not benefit us. It's not showing any quality. The more you get knowledge, the more quality you have, the more manner you have, the more be good behavior you have, the more good conduct you have. It doesn't mean how much you recite, how much you memorize, no. How much it is in your heart and how much you submit to this knowledge and oppress yourself to implement this knowledge and this is the obedience of Allah. Some people said, you're going to talk about family, but so far you're not talking about family, you talk about knowledge. I'm going to the roots of the problem. I can go now and tell you step by step all the qualification of the family and the role and all this and people will run away and not even ready to listen and obey. By this way, my dear brother and sister in Islam, I'm trying to give you the backbone, the support, the foundation of what we're going to talk about. Is to remember me and you, we are a slave of Allah. We're not a slave of ourselves. We are a slave and servant of Allah. And we have duty in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do what? To be a slave. And this is why even we acting like the non-Muslim. Today when you go to invite somebody to Islam, they said, oh, what about this rule? What about this rule? I don't like this rule. I cannot implement this rule. I said, please look at the message. Don't look to the rule. Rule coming after you build faith. If you have faith, you can hold the rule. If you do not have faith, you cannot carry the rules. Rule will be too heavy. You cannot carry it. And this is our condition today. By this way, I'm just giving you the foundation of where the problem lies. We lived for a long time without no rules, without no regulation, without no closeness, without no sincerity, without no honesty between us and Allah, the Creator. And once it's done, we build a lot of disease, a lot of bad manner, bad conduct, bad behavior, bad habits. Some is hidden, some is shown. And now what happened? To do the cleaning job is not easy. Is not easy. And it needs a lot of humble, a lot of honesty, a lot of sincerity to really take the medication and able to be cured. It's like a person, he have pain and he have many symptoms. And you tell him, let's go to the doctor. He said, I don't want to go to the doctor. 
This medication is good for you. No, I don't like it. He knew it will benefit him. But he's stubborn. He's stubborn and arrogant. And he oppressing himself, even with the knowledge, he will lose. This is called stupidity. But the stupidity coming from blindness. And blindness coming from Allah, because the person, he do not want to be humble. Yes, the medication can feel sour for a little bit, but a lot of benefit. The rule can be sour, but inside is all the benefit. And this is what's happening to us today. When we lost the main chief of the whole earth, the owner of the earth, the king of all the king, the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the ruler, this is what happened to us. <clears throat> Because actually the topic of family, when you really talk about it, is a lot of rule and regulation by Allah and by the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu But people hear it from one ear and throw it away. Do you know in Islam what it meaning? To hear the command of Allah and the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu when he command you do and don't, and advise you don't do that and do that, and you take it and reject it, and you don't like it, even in the set of the heart, this hypocrisy, this pure nifaq, 100% pure nifaq. A Muslim even can say, Oh Allah, I listen, but I'm weak. I'm a set of sins. Oh Allah, allow me to do. This is a Muslim. He's a weak, but in the eye of Allah, he's still a good Muslim. Because he submit, but he have weakness. And he trying. But the bad one, the one follow shaitan steps. No. I cannot do this. This is for you only. And the person become a rejecter. And before you know it, who he is rejecting? He is rejecting a human being or he rejecting the owner of the earth and the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is what going on my dear brother and sister in Islam by this way I'm just giving you the foundation of our problem and let's go step by step in Islam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He explained to us in many areas and the Prophet ﷺ is the nucleus of the Ummah, is the family. And the family we said containing two, husband and wife, the beginner of the nucleus. A man has obligation and duty. And a wife has obligation and duty. A man has certain rule and regulation he has to follow. A wife has certain rule and regulation she has to follow. Today, nobody wants to follow. The man complaining about the wife. The wife complaining about the man. What's the problem here? The problem in here is a pure hypocrisy, pure nifaq. We have the books, we have the tapes, we have the knowledge. We know Allah said, we know the Prophet say, but we're not ready to accept. You see, again, you can say, I'm weak, give me some time, be patient with me. This is normal. But to reject, and rejecting what? Rejecting the rule of Allah and the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By this way, what we have? We have weak Iman, weak faith, very low amount of taqwa, fear of Allah, and we have a lot of hypocrisy and a lot of disease. 
What is the disease? I always say, what about envy, jealousy, kib, hasad? Loving dunya, loving material, not think about death, just think about it from lips. But deep inside, no. Because if you really love, love Allah and prepare yourself for death, all of a sudden, all this disease would go away. Because once you do not running after this life and you do not want to accumulate, why are you going to be arrogant about? Why are you going to be jealous about? Why are you going to be envy about? Why are you going to be selfish about? There's nothing really to be selfish about. By this way, again, it is a status of Iman, status of faith. Don't forget our faith is all unseen. We work for the unseen world. We do not see Jannah. We do not see a paradise. We do not see hellfire. We do not see the touch of the grave. We do not see what's going on in the grave. But we believe. And this real belief will show up in the right of command. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some. And we're going to see where we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He put the man as a ruler of the family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is His decision. There's many places in Quran, in the Sunnah. I'm not going to go through it. I'm just explaining. I'm just talking about understanding of different topic. Because once I go to detail and information, people have a dispute. If this hadith is daif or qawi, is strong or weak, authentic or not authentic, what it meaning? And believe me, everything I say, inshallah, I can give you all kind of proof. But the main proof we need is to prove our heart to be united to Allah, to able to understand and comprehend. A boat cannot run with two people. A car cannot run with two drivers. Anything in life cannot run with two. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in Quran and challenge us. He said of the, the creator, the creation has two creator, they will have dispute over each other. And each one will take a part of his creation. Cannot be. The whole creation under one creator. And the family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he choose the man and he give him certain quality and qualification to be the head of the family. For a purpose and wisdom, Allah know. Now, and also is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he want this man as a husband to be responsible in the day of judgment because he's the head, he's the ruler, he's the emir of the house, he is the responsible. But don't forget. Once he is responsible, he has a follower. Who is a follower of his family? His wife and children. If they obey him completely, he will be completely responsible for every action. And they have no problem. He is completely responsible. But if they disobey him, they will take the burden of responsibility. And he has to give advice only. If he did not give the advice, he will be responsible. But if he gives the advice and gives the material and try, he did his job. Now their job is to implement. It's not his job anymore. Now, what is the main duty of a husband? The main duty of the husband is to supply. Supply the house of means of surviving. Not luxury, again. We misunderstand. 
surviving, meaning amount of food can enable the body to be in a good health. Clothing to protect us from winter and summer. A, a, a shell or a house or a place where we can have our privacy and our unity as a family. This we call in Islam necessity. But today, sometimes people ask for something. They want a house. They want a big house. They want a big shakka. Shakka in Egypt is, you know, an apartment. But apartment in Egypt not like apartment in the United States. You have to buy it. Buy it from two, three hundred thousand to maybe a million dollars, according to your level. Is this a necessity? We have to ask ourselves, is big difference between necessity and luxury. Our job as a male to fulfill the necessity. Clothing, shelter. And most of all, the second between a husband and wife. But this second, to develop it, you have to have the main core. If the main core broken, you cannot get the rest. Like one brother came to me and asked me, please, can you come and talk to a bunch of brother about the brotherhood in Islam? I said, you don't read this verse. Innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa. The believer is brotherhood. But if we're not a good believer, you want to build the brotherhood, you cannot do it. You will go upside down. You want to build the brotherhood, you have to build Iman. If you build Iman, brotherhood come alone. Same thing in marriage. You have taqwa, you have fear of Allah, you have unity in the family. You have the heart together. You have the mercy of Allah. You have the sukna. You know the closeness. All this coming as a gift from Allah after being fear and love of Allah and being obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I fail to have this level of Iman or one of us is finished, all this gift will be lifted. Why? Because one of us or some of us, we do not deserve it. And what at this time, what the problem will be? The problem will be a trial for all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, the half verse of Surah, uh, 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 verse 20 in Surah Al-Furqan, He said, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْدَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةٍ أَتَصْبِرُونَ وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا we create you and make you a trial for each other. You will be patient and Allah is all seen. He explained to us, Allah, I know what is going on. Today, whoever sees this tape can raise his hand and tell me, which family you know, a husband and wife is united? How many family today as a Muslim? Husband and wife is united. And how many of them in the same level of Iman, faith? Cannot be. Always different. Why? A trial, a test. My father, may Allah give him mercy in the grave, he explained this in a simple way. He tell me, whoever is strong have to exercise patience. And whoever weak, he has to seek, if he's honest. You see? By this way, both of them get different trial from different angle. By this way, in the Day of Judgment, the weak, Allah will ask him, he or she, why you do not listen? Why you do not try to reach? Why you do not try to get knowledge? Why you do not try to obey? And the one Allah give him Iman, Allah will ask him, why you will not exercise patience and good manner and try? 
and just return the topic to Allah until or unless it can harm the family unity, which sometimes we see today. And it harm the kids, which the real main things in a family is to bring the khilafah in earth, one of the main benefit of the family, to bring the representative of us in earth after we die. This is the importance of the family. And this is some of the main role of the husband. He has to teach his wife, not teach her how to cook and how to sew, but teach her her Islam. Is obligation. A Muslim husband obligated to teach. And if he cannot teach, he give her all the mean to learn. If you reject, is her job. And he has to exercise patience. But he did his job in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has to give her her right, the physical right, and fulfill her need. Today we have a game going on. A husband do not like his wife, or the wife do not like the husband. They create problem. After they create problem, the relationship become cold. After the relationship become cold, he or she complain, you not give me my rights. But even in American say, is a very slang way in the street, they said it take two to tango. You cannot tango by yourself. You know, you have to have two, you know. By this way, in a family, for the family to live and survive, both has to try. But if one keep trying from one side, after a while, he's a human being or she's a human being. Either they give up, or he gave up, or she gave up, or they lost interest. And they lost the status of the heart. And they lost the tranquility and the mercy of Allah. Why? Why Allah will take it away? Because somebody was playing game. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran in many verse, He said of the meaning of if so people have a dispute and they call people from the family to like to mediate between each other, if these two people have good intention, Allah will unite them again. By this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He put condition, the good intention. Good intention for husband, good intention for a, for a wife, good intention for the people who want to fix the dispute. And many evidence from the Sunnah about this topic, according to the intention. Now this is a major right of a husband. What also the obligation of a husband? Believe it or not, the major obligation of the husband, not inside the family, is outside the family. A husband has to pray five times a day in the masjid. A husband has to be active in his community. The husband has to teach and learn. The husband has to run after the widow, after the needy, after the problem in the community. A husband, a man, he has to spread Islam. And if the call of jihad came, or a struggle, he has to respond. A lot of duty. This is his job. Meaning if he die, any man, he will be questioned about his obligation and his duty in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this another topic is the bing bong topic today. You go to a man and you ask him, you have to do your job. He said, what about my wife? And you go to a wife and said, do your duty and fulfill your right. She said, what about my husband? It's not right. If we claim we are a Muslim, if we claim we have a belief in Allah, 
we will surrender and submit to what Allah wants. Despite what the other side do, is not our job. My job to do and fulfill my duty for Allah. Why? I'm a slave and servant of Allah. And when I die, I'm going to the grave and be questioned about what I done or what I'm doing and how much I'm trying. What the other side doing is he or she's business. It's not my business. By this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He give the man the upper side in the family. Doesn't mean a dictatorship, doesn't mean to be a, 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 like a complete uh, 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 arrogant in a house. No. And even if you have some disease, it's his business and he will be punished for it. But he has a duty and he has an obligation and he's responsible in the day of judgment in the front of Allah of the whole family. Now we go to the wife. What is the wife's duty? The wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have, I want her to be a follower of her ruler, her husband. Doesn't mean she has no personality, but she has a personality. She's a complete human being. She has her own dignity under the rule of Allah and the obedience of her husband. Why? Allah wanted this way. If you do not believe what I said, for example, is a book called Major Sins by Imam al dhahabi It is available in Arabic and English also in the market. Read it. It's a chapter. It's a tiny chapter, only three, four pages. Wallahi, if any woman or any wife read these four pages, she will get a lot. But only if she understand who she is, she is a slave of Allah. But if she understands she's a slave of Allah, she will submit to the knowledge she read. But if she will not able to submit to the knowledge she read, what do you want me to do? I can talk and talk and talk, but it will not value. The main thing is we ready to submit. There's a lot of books in the market today about the right of a husband, the right of a woman, the right of a wife, the obligation, the duty, the manner, everything, Arabic, English, you name it. But where is the heart is ready to accept and surrender and submit to Allah? This is my brother and sister in Islam. A wife, she is the mother of the ummah, not a family. Because Islam recognizes if the mother is good, the family is strong. And if the mother is strong and the family is strong, the whole ummah is strong. Because she is a factor of the production of the new generation. She is the one she's been most of the time at home. She's the one she teaching the kids. She's the one she teaches manner. But today, with all respect to you, imagine if our sister have nothing to give and our husband have nothing to give. What is going on? We have empty children. In Arabic terminology, they said, a cub will have coming from the cup, whatever containing. I do not know if I say it correctly because sometimes when I try to translate some certain Arabic word, sometimes I put it upside down. Meaning a cup containing milk. If you spill it, you spill only milk. If a cup containing water, you only spill water. Whatever in a cup and you spill it, this is what you get from the cup. 
But you cannot have an empty cup and say, give me milk. It's empty. I cannot give you milk. And if the cup is having water, I cannot give you milk. Whatever in the cup, this is the only thing you can get from the cup. And same thing for us. We are like an empty cup. Either filled with water, filled with milk, filled with mineral, whatever, what can, what kind of feeling we have, when we interact with each other, this is what we will have. This is what will come out of us. Whatever inside will show off and will show up. And this is a reality. Now, according to me, as a father or a mother, whatever I have from knowledge, whatever I have from obedience, whatever I have from manner, it will show up in my children. It will show up in my conduct. I will feed them. But if I'm empty, my mind is empty, my heart is empty, I'm thinking about material. All day long, I'm thinking about material. I'm busy about what I get, what I will not get. What do you think I will leave to my kids? I will leave also emptiness. <clears throat> this is very important. The importance of what we have and what we gain to give to our children, to give to our family. How much a husband and wife sit together try to interact with each other. How many wives sit with the husband, try to understand what, she, what he wants, what is his thought, and support him. We have the example of Khadija radiallahu anha, the first wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was older than him, and he was consulting her. But look at the kind of woman she, he is consulting. A very wise woman, very obedient, and in the meantime, a very strong woman, very wealthy woman, and support him for whatever he do. And he used to cry all his life after she died. And he said of the meaning of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never give me like Khadija. She believe in me when people disbelieve in me. She give me when people rejecting me and do not give me. And supporting me when people denying me. And she comfort me when people was oppressing me. You see the wife, what she give to her husband? A lot of things. Because also to have a real working man he have a lot and sometimes he need a woman a woman can support him a woman can push him and charge him a woman can comfort him in a time when he has need a woman play a very important role she's almost like the tree the one to care about all the branches and all the fruits and all the leaves. She is the roots of the tree. She has a lot of duty. In Arabic examples used to say, you teaching a man, you teaching a village, you teaching a woman, you teaching a nation. One of the wife of one of the tabi'een, the follower of the companion, his name, Abdullah al-Ibn Sayyib, she used to say, we used to care about our husband, like our husband like a king and a prince. Why? They want to try to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I ask the husband and wife, how many people, if you treat them good, they will be bad? And why you treat bad? And what's the benefit? And if I die tonight, what am I going to say to Allah? If I believe in Allah, and if I believe in death, 
And if I believe, I will be questioned about my own action, not my husband or my wife action. Each one is completely responsible. Imagine if the husband and wife is not together. What do you think about the kids? You have confusion. You have loneliness. You have a lot of disease. We inherit what we have to our kids. We the one we inherited. We the one we feed them. If we feed them goodness, they will be good. If we feed them our disease, they will be sick too. And in the day of judgment, we will be responsible. Do we understand that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, He said, Oh, you believe. Protect yourself and your family from the hellfire. Today, when we lost the family, we lost everything. We lost everything. How a man can function without a wife? And how a wife function without Allah and her own husband's support? According to the rule and teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. How many times I go to a family and they reject what Allah said and the Prophet ﷺ said? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran in many verse, He said, if you have a dispute and you have any matter between each other, go to and seek what Allah advise you and his messenger. <coughs> it, you will find the solution. Very simple. If we are in the state of Iman in Islam, okay, oh my wife, oh my husband, let's come together and sit down. What is the problem? How we fix it according to what Allah said and the teaching of the Prophet? Finished. There's no problem. If we are a believer, if we are in a state of submission, but today we have to question that. The obligation of the woman to teach the children not to cook, not to clean, believe it or not. A lot of Muslim people think the real job of the wife is to cook and clean. But actually, a woman or a wife in Islam, cooking and cleaning and caring about the household is actually a charity from her to her husband. Is not a duty, it's a charity. If you do it, you get extra reward. If you don't do it, it's nothing. But a woman can want extra reward. If she wants, he do extra reward by different way, you try to do extra reward. But doesn't mean it is obligation. By this way, for men, they have to understand this not the obligation. Actually, the obligation is to teach the children. Obligation is to obey Allah. Obligation is to protect herself. Today, I'm really shocked when I see our Muslim women. They decorate themselves when they go out. And when they have with a husband, mashallah. You know, like monkey in a tree. Forgive me, my dear sister in Islam and brother in Islam. I call sometimes some sister on the phone. MashaAllah, very sweet voice. For a further, very sweet voice. Once he called the husband, MashaAllah, like they call in Dracula, you know. He said, SubhanAllah. Which one has right over the others? Which one Allah command you to be sweet to? The furna who never give you anything? Or the husband Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you right and give you obligation? Sometimes I question myself, where is the obedience of Allah? For Allah, not me. I'm a human being. I can die any time. But think about it. Where? 
a wife cannot spend from the husband money until the husband permission. A wife cannot even fast enough fasting without the husband permission. A wife even cannot go to Hajj without the husband permission. And if he will not allow her, he will be obligated to the day of judgment. He will be responsible. If she said, I want to go and he refused, he is responsible. This is a major, some of the major rights and obligation for a man and a woman. All of them I feel. The Quora family structure, Iman and Tukwa. And Tukwa. The core of the family structure, again, is Iman and Taqwa. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, of the meaning of, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me to remember, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ سَمِيعَ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة By this way it is from the sign of Allah to create among us a husband and wife a sign from Allah Look at what Allah called it a sign from Allah and after that, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَنِ الَّذِي جَعَلْ Who is the one who really did it? Allah. مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً What happens if it's مَوَدَّةً and رَحْمَةً is not there? Meaning he's left it. Why? Something is wrong. Everybody has to search inside. What I am doing. Not what the other side doing. What I am doing. How much I am really trying. If I'm honest to Allah, I will take care about myself. I take care about my side. And make sure I am the wrong one. I am the one missing something. I am the one who should try more. Not the other side. This is Islam, my brother. If, if all the companions before they die, they question themselves, they might be in a state of hypocrite or hypocrisy. But today, we wave finger. But nobody waving finger to himself or herself. And this I feel very sad today. When I go to houses all over and I see the majority of Muslim today, male and female, has been rejected. And I use the word rejected. You see, the word of ignorant, the word of, they cannot do it. If a person coming and said, I cannot do it, I'm weak. He's a sinner. No problem, he's not rejecting. He's a sinner. He cannot do it, he cannot handle. He doesn't have the iman strong in a man to carry the rule. But if a person said, I do not want to do it. I do not want to hear it. He's a rejecter. Believe it or not, a rejecter in the eye of Allah, he's out of Islam. He's out of Islam, he or she. Because we cannot reject any command or teaching of the Prophet. We have no right to reject. We can be weak, we can be a sinner, but we cannot be a rejecter. Rejector is dangerous. And this is what causing all the disease. Because rejection is a state of hypocrisy, a state of nifaq, a state of arrogance. Again, this why with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of a sudden, I was planning to talk about many rights from husband and wife, but all of a sudden, I do not talk about it. Because I believe if I start talking about it, husband will fight, a wife will fight, and nobody will follow. Because the topic is not where is the knowledge. You can pick a book and find the knowledge. 
you will read exactly what I'm going to tell you. It's available all over. Now you go to internet, you will find it. You go to books, you will find it. You go to tips, you will find it. No problem. This is why some of the wise scholars today, they do not go dig in this topic too much. For example, I tell you now, four pages located in major sense about women issue. Read it. It's a couple of pages in Riyadh Salihin. Read it. In Arabic books, mashallah, I can give you many, many names of many books. And in English books, I can give you, inshallah, in the future, if you want, many names of English books. But the topic is not the books. Where is the husband is ready to obey Allah and live as a Muslim husband? And where is the five wife, she willing to be a servant of Allah and live as a Muslim wife? Where? Where? Today it become, like the Prophet said, like a black hair in a white ball or a white hair in a black ball. Imagine you won't find it. The knowledge is there, my brother and sister in Islam. I know some of you was waiting for me to give you the knowledge. But the knowledge, wallahi, it is all over. Anyone ready and he want to be, to be a good husband or she won't be a good wife, all she do, call me up, I give you the name of the books. I sit with you and tell you what has been reported in all the major books, no problem. I can go even and buy you the books. But who and where is the husband and wife willing to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I feel sad, very sad. Because we worry about salah, we worry about fasting, we worry about hajj, but we not worry about obeying Allah 24 hours. Which one is more important? Like one scholar, he said, when you calculate all the prayer, how much time in the whole day is not too much. But actually the main worship in the day is not the time of salah, it's between salah. But we won't make salah, read Quran, do dhikr, but we worship ourselves. We worship ourselves today. And when you read Quran by your own eyes, you will read it. The sign of the hypocrite, once you be questioned or commanded to follow the command of Allah and the teaching of Allah, they run away. They do not want to hear it. They were rejected. They have hypocrisy inside. Today, I'm getting away from this topic. But in the meantime, because many people demand it, I'm trying to tell you. Please, my brother and sister in Islam, go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek guidance from Allah. Seek the mercy of Allah. Be humble. Ask yourself, is me humble to Allah as a husband? Is me humble to Allah as a wife? Is me really a servant of Allah? or a servant of others. And if a servant of other whom? Is me ready if somebody come and advise me about my right and my obligation, I will listen? Is me ready today or tomorrow? And what I'm waiting for? To the angel of death come and I will die in this status? A husband has a big obligation in front of Allah and a wife has a big obligation in front of Allah. Each one has big obligation in front of Allah. What about our kids? When I look to America, for example, the North America, I see, look at the new generation, this stray, they get away. If we die, what are we leaving after us? When I went a couple of times to Latin America, I find the majority of new immigrants from Arabic country, 
But this new immigrant, the Iranian immigrant from three to four, five hundred years ago, I find out the third and fourth generation has finished. Why? We're running after material. And we're not running after Allah. We're not running toward Allah. We want to accumulate material. We want to give the, our kids the material. But when the time coming to give them Arabic language, to give them the manner, to give them the right conduct, to give them belief, to give them faith, to show them the problem today is not the knowledge. What we show them, kids is imitator. I cannot feed them something and show something else. Today my heart is cutting and be pieces when I see family, they punch each other in the front of the kids. And the kids lose respect and they insult each other. I said, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. May Allah save us. We are in the end of our time. Today, the statistics is a lot of divorce has been going on in the family ummah, which is new. It's new phenomenon. It was not exist before. Very new. The family broken. A wife ran away. A husband ran away. The children is lost. This new. This new. All this disease is new. Why? The lack of Iman and the lack of fear of Allah. Do we really think we're going to meet Allah? This question, please. Everybody I have to answer. Where we are and where we are going. Where we are, we are lost and our family is lost. And where we going with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this question I do not really know. I know I will try inshallah to please Allah. And with the mercy of Allah, I hope with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try to do some good deed before I die. What other doing is not my business. My business is to try. Nuh alayhi salam, he invite his family and all his nation, 950 years, no one even listened. One do not listen. Why Allah give us all this? A trial, a trial. Today, nobody has been denied from knowledge. You cannot say today I have no knowledge. You cannot. Video, you have video. Cassette, you have cassette. Books, you have books. You name it, you get it. What is missing? Where is the desire? Where is the soul can carry this Iman? Where are we going? Like normal. We do not believe in hereafter. If we believe in the hereafter, and we believe we have places really waiting for us, we have real shakka, but not in Egypt. We have shakka either, either in Jannah or in Hellfire. Big one. I'm serious. Everybody has his own. And is ready. Full equipped. <laughs> and no tax, and no customs, full furnished. You do not have to get mobilia or furniture or nothing. No, it's all with it. Even wives coming with it also. Now some sister said, oh, wife coming with it. What about me? I'm a wife. What I'm going to get? Wallahi. Last week I was someplace giving some talk. And one sister get up and she said, excuse me, you talk about all this for men. What about me? What I'm going to get? Is all Allah talking Quran about husband will get wife, husband will get wife, husband will get wife. What about me? What I will get? I asked her, you believe Allah is just? She said, yes. 
I said, do you think Allah will send you to Jannah and let you live like that? Lonely again? <laughs> no. Allah will give you something. What He will give you? This is another topic. If you marry, He will give you a husband according to the level of your Iman and his Iman. What happens if your Iman is high? More than him. Is a topic, we're not going to dispute it now, inshallah, in the Day of Judgment, you can dispute it with Allah. But you will get some husband. Make sure about that. But remember that your beauty will not be according to your beauty in this earth. Your beauty according to your piety. Your fear of Allah, your taqwa, your fear, your iman, your love of Allah, your good deed, your submission. And according to some report, Allah elevate your beauty above the beauty of the Hurain, which is a very beautiful creature in Jannah like female or the other female. Allah will elevate your beauty so high. Why Allah will elevate your beauty so high? To get extra status more than anybody else. Today I ask myself, if you listen brother and sister to this topic, what bother you about? I said something wrong? I didn't even go to regulation? I tell you exactly what I you're supposed to do? Not even that. Only I'm telling you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you to do, not me. And even I do not go to the detail because if I go to the detail, some of you will take it offended. A man or a woman. If you want any detail, please do not hesitate. Try to reach me, I will give you any detail you want. Male or female. And I will help you to reach any library and any books and give you whatever material you want. But the topic, who is ready to be a Muslim woman or a Muslim wife and who is ready to be a Muslim husband? This is a topic, my dear brother and sister in Islam. We finished? We finished. Any question, Abu Shaykh? Any something come in your heart? Think please about what I said. And ask ourselves, what I said wrong? If my wording upset you, why are you upset? And if my wording is right, what are you going to do about it? And if I'm a husband, what I have to do? What is my obligation? What is my rights? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command me to do? And what is the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu about how I can conduct my family affair? Please, your job to seek knowledge, to know what you're doing. No custom and no, you know, habits from back home. No. We are servant to Allah. We're not a slave and servant to my father and my mother. We are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are a wife, ask yourself again, same thing like husband, what I said wrong? And if I said something right, what I'm going to do about it? And if I'm really a slave of Allah, what I should do about this topic? which I should seek knowledge and start implementing? What about if I'm a kid? What am I supposed to do? What is a kid's duty? When you are a kid, you have a duty to obey your parents and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you grow up, you try to imitate Ismail alayhi salam. By complete obedience to your parents, by this way you get the most pleasure of Allah and seek knowledge to be a strong Muslim. If you keep lying and keep you cheating 
and you're spending your time in a foolish time in the front of TV or in the front of Nintendo or nonsense and you're not learning, we have to build environment in the house. We have to bring back Islam in the houses. Unless we have Islam in the house, we're not going anywhere. And I know sometimes people tell me you repeat yourself. But please ask yourself, I'm repeating myself. What about you as a listener? You get something after all this repeating? We are the farmer of the new generation. We are the farming, the farmer of new Muslim. And according to what we put in the ground, we will take. And if we do not put nothing, what we get? Nothing. And if we put weeds, we get weeds. And if we put flower, we get flower. If we put fruit, we get fruit. If we make an effort, we get result. If we're not going to make an effort. Today I feel very sad when I see husband making effort all over for money. And a wife making effort for to, to get and collect all the material status. But no any thinking. What about deen? What about the deen of Allah? Do you know, brother and sister in Islam, we have a duty in the front of Allah? Do you know we have to spread Islam? Do we know we have to exercise spreading rights and forbid what is evil? Do we know we have to spread brotherhood and sisterhood? Do we know we have to occupy masajid? Do we know we have to make people understand about Islam? in the right way, with the right conduct and behavior? Do we know we have a lot of work to do? Do we know seeking Islamic knowledge is obligation? Obligation, equivalent to Salah. But people misunderstand. Do we know? Do we know we will be questioned about the job? My job as a Muslim? Not my obligation. It's a big difference between obligation and a job. Your obligation is a five pillar and doing some good deed. But your job to spread Islam, to carry the banner of Islam, to carry it inside, outside, to convey it to other. There's a message. We carrier of the message. Once you receive the message, you are a carrier of the message. And you will be questioned about it in the Day of Judgment. Do we know that? Do we run after trying to reach and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we know the owner of us, the one who gave us all this gift? We have to answer him and we have to show gratitude and thanks to what he offer us. How? By the way he want it, not the way I like. Do we know? Do we know we can die any moment? Any moment? Do we know we're going to be questioned about all this, what I'm talking about, in the grave? I have many stories to give you and many things to share with you, but even I'm afraid to share it with you. Wallah. Because once I share it, people will be offensive and take it very personally and do not listen to the message. But my message, please, ask yourself, I'm a slave to Allah or I'm a slave to Shaitan? This is my message. Husband or a wife? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to seek the reality and the real obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To clean our heart from arrogant, kib, from all the disease of the heart, from hypocrisy, from being astray and be the friend of shaitan, the devil. 
to spread what is right and forbid what is evil. To unite our heart toward Allah, to leave something in this earth will benefit us and mankind. This a Muslim, male or female, to leave something to people can remember and said, may Allah give him mercy or may Allah give her mercy. She used to do. This is what we carry after we die. Our name and our action will live. Body will die. Body will, the worm will eat it. But our action never die. In this life or in the grave or in the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. And make us die, live as a Muslim. And die as a Muslim. And they're resurrected as a Muslim. May Allah forgive me for anything I said offensive you <coughs> or my mistakes. And may Allah give barakah to what I said. I know many people were expecting many topic, but this what came from me. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in it, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahum wa bahamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم. Now we have a question. Now, now we have a question. The question is, how you clean your heart? How you clean your heart? You see, the heart. Is not like a pot. You get some Ajax and some acid and clean it. But actually, it's similar in different way. It is a pot. Yes, it's a pot. And what inside? Either good iman or a lot of disease. How we clean it to build iman? One of the major way of really cleaning your heart is dhikr. Remember Allah all the time. I find out today the majority of us as a Muslim, the majority of our disease because we not remember Allah enough. Somebody said, okay, but I see people remember Allah but they do not have a good manner. Because also remember Allah can be in a state of hand, or in a state of tongue, or in a state of heart. And the only way to get benefit, if you have the remember of Allah, by a state of tongue and heart together. And by doing that a lot, it cleanses your heart. Because if you remember Allah all the time, and remember the quality of Allah, you start getting the reality of Allah. Once you get the reality of Allah, it puts you in a state of awareness and weakness. And once it puts you in a state of awareness and weakness, now it will really hold you from being an oppressor, being a stingy, backbiting, and all the disease now, you see? It becomes a wall. It will save you from the action of Satan. By this way, number one is remember of Allah in many ways. Reading Quran, reading Islamic book, remember Allah day and night, praise Allah, thank Allah, be in a state of contentment. Very important. What else? The right company. Very extremely important. Whoever you will, it will benefit you or harm you building the environment again even in your own house like tv bad movie stuff like that like instead of watching dirty harry you can watch something else you know a lot of people watching all kind of crazy things and in the end what it will give you what you see what you hear, what you say, this is what they call it in Islam, the tubes filling your own heart. 
according to what you're filling it with, it will come with. You talk about Allah, you talk about the hereafter, you read many things about many obedience, it will help you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will waken your awareness and reality about your this life and hereafter. But if you are in a state of all kind of wonder and you allow everything to enter, is no way. Today one of our problem is mixing. We mix good and bad. We cannot be patient to be good. We cannot have the quality to stay fast. We dropped. Anybody try to stay fast today, they call it, he has a complicated situation, or has a complex personality. Why? Because you're not joining the environment. Because you are a foreigner. If you try to really become a real submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you become a foreigner. You become a real foreigner among even your own member of your family. Alhamdulillah, many people said, I'm so complicated. I'm a complicated person. Why I'm a complicated person? Allah knows. Because I'm not joking. I'm not joining the people in the nonsense they do. By this way, steadfast is very important. And today I find a lot of people do not willing to steadfast. They're willing to steadfast in their own bad habit. But they're not willing to steadfast in what Allah wants. Again, if I'm a slave to Allah, I start going toward Allah. But it's not easy. Again, it's not a magic word. It's struggle. And to struggle, you have to have sincerity. And sincerity have to have ikhlas and honesty. Between whom? Between you and Allah. Today I believe the reality of Allah is not exist in the heart of majority of people, Muslim or non-Muslim. The reality of the Creator in our heart and the reality of who we are is not there. Why? Because not even talking about it. We're not reading about it. We're not working for it. We're not struggling for it. Like one person, he said, a farmer is struggling in the land, he loves his land. An engineer, he, he makes development in his company, he loves his company. A chemist, he do some work in laboratory, he loves his laboratory. Whatever who you are and what you're doing, whatever how much you struggle for, the love of what you're struggling for, it will come in your heart. Today, because we struggle for dunya too much, our thought and our thinking and our heart become dunya, dunya, dunya. Life, life, accumulating, buying, selling, getting, having. Even think about giving, it becomes very, very rare. Today I meet very rare people who are really willing to give and giving for Allah. Why? Because people want to possess, want to take. And this also is also the quality of hypocrite and believer. The believer willing to give because he has no dunya in his heart. In his heart only Allah. But actually is the believer, he has Allah. He want Jannah. He want to reach the Firdaus al-A'la. He or she won't be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you remind me, for example, the story of the wife of Pharaoh, the wife of the king of Egypt. Imagine a wife of a king of Egypt, but she heard the message of Moses. And when she heard the message of Musa, she believed. And when she believed, her husband took her and hang her from her hair and from her, 
and he nailed her hand and her foot. And Moses السلام, came to see her in the middle of torture and she's smiling. Why is she smiling? The state of fear, the state of content with Allah. And even then, at this time, she screamed, a major scream. This scream has been elevated in the eye of Allah so much to the point Allah put it in Quran until the day of judgment as a verse. The report of the meaning of is when he was torturing her so severe, she screamed and she said, Oh Allah, do not make me lose my faith. And at this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to her her own palace in paradise, in Jannah. At this time, she screamed of a famous scream, and she said, Rabbi, ibni li indaka baytan fil Jannah. Oh Allah, I do not want this palace. I want palace close to you, Allah. Look at a woman believe in Allah, what the belief did to her heart. Because belief will not distinguish between male and female. Once it enters the heart and penetrates the heart, it becomes so beautiful. You will value the faith more than anything else. By this way, to cure your heart, it has also to have a tawfiq from Allah, ability from Allah according again to what you desire. Allah will not give you something you do not want. We desire guidance, we desire mercy, we desire Allah content, work for it, struggle for it. You have as a man a lot of struggle, a wife has a lot of struggle against our ego, our arrogance. For whom? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By this way, dhikr, remember Allah, environment, right companion, and most of all, sincerity and honesty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and willing to change, and try to change, a struggle for change, and also, you try to reach Allah, cry to Allah at night. If you're honest, I ask people, if you're honest, do not tell me I'm weak. Call Allah. Tell him I'm weak, Allah. Please, Allah, cure my heart. Allah will cure you. Oh, Allah, give me more guidance. Allah will give you. Oh, Allah, make me pure servant to you. Allah will give you. Allah said in Quran, whoever struggled for me, I will show him my way. This is my brother and sister in Islam. One and some of the ways of curing his heart. Don't forget, any cure need medication, and medication need a doctor, and the doctor has to prescribe the prescription. Do you have a doctor? Do you tell him what you have? Because each one of us has different disease. Are we ready today? Or do we ready today? If we sit with somebody and said, excuse me, you might be arrogant a little bit. You said, excuse me, make dua for me. And you go to cry to Allah and said, oh Allah, take my arrogant away. Today, if you said somebody, you might have a little bit of arrogant. He said, no, no, use an arrogant one. If you ask somebody, maybe you have some problem. He said, no, no, it is your problem. What does this mean? It's a state of arrogance, a state of blindness. Why? We're not even seeking. We're not even seeking to get cured. But you want cured? Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell him, cure me Allah, Allah will open the road. Anything you want, call Allah. Allah will give you according to your intention. Now you see? By this way, if a person has a disease in the heart, why? Because he's not seeking help. He didn't want it. Why he didn't want it? Because he doesn't believe. 
I have a sick. I have sickness. Everybody sick. I'm fine. This is a major sickness. Unless you said I am sick, I need medication. Why Allah will cure you? Imagine today I ask myself, when I look to all the companion, each one of them, even in the moment of death, even they are completely aware about uh, the Prophet ﷺ gives them the license, insha'Allah, and the good title and the news of going to Jannah, paradise, and each one was questioning himself, he or she, and worrying about their condition and their heart. Today, one of the major disease is we seek no disease. I'm not sick. Everybody's sick. I'm not sick. This is a disease above any disease. I call it the blindness. And many weeks ago, I started saying, Oh Allah, if you're going to spread fitna in earth, Oh Allah, take my soul before I become one of them. Because once blindness is spread, nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Because whoever Allah blind, nobody can give him vision. And whoever Allah give him vision, nobody can give him blindness. Any questions? Because I feel everybody going to go to sleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us awake before we die. Because the Prophet sallallahu he said, and nasu niyam wa idha matu istayqazu or maybe it is a weak hadith but of the meaning of and it has many support people are asleep in a state of sleepness and if they die they will be awake they see the reality except the believer the believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the real believer Allah lets them know where they are and where is he going where we are we are on earth where are we going we're going to the grave what of our final destination either paradise or hellfire this is what we believe this is our focus goal and this is what we should be all the time in our head and our life this is where we really live this is our resident our security our insurance with Allah not with anybody else the owner of tomorrow is Allah, not me. You want to leave something for your kids? Leave taqwa, fear of Allah and good deed. And if you don't believe me, read verse 9, Surah An-Nisa, and in many another verse in Quran talking about this topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to what he like and be pleased with may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the love of Allah in our heart and take the love of this life away from our heart and make us pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh